What's up, guys? Welcome to this edition of a Funko Podcast. I am DK Wrestler, and of course, you are listening to our second part of our MCU fandom related podcast, more specifically titled I Am Iron Man, the MCU movies podcast featuring none other than our special guest co host, K Dog and Fish from the Funko Pop retail store, K Dog and Fish. In which, yes, like you heard, this is the second part of our podcast because we couldn't fit all 30 MCU films into one podcast. So for the first part, if you have not listened to it yet, features the first 15 films of the MCU, which kicks off with 2008's Iron Man and goes all the way until 2017's Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. And if for some reason you did not like the first 15 films of the MCU, then I guess carry on to listening to this part if you have not listened to the first part. But without further ado, let's catch up with our friends over at K-Dog and Fish and kick off this second part of the MCU podcast with 2017's spider-man homecoming all right so the next film we have is spider-man homecoming released july 7th 2017 on a budget of 175 million dollars box office of 880.2 million dollars tomato ranking 92 percent audience score 87 percent I thought it was a great movie, especially rewatching it. At first, I was like, eh, this is all right. But I rewatched it and then I'm like, OK, this is actually a pretty great movie. It's weird, however, seeing Michael Keaton as a villain in a Marvel movie than a hero in a DC film. And I was kind of a little disappointed that it wasn't entirely like you didn't get really much of an origin of how this Peter Parker became Spider-Man. I know, obviously, he got bit by a spider, but I'm pretty sure it was like two different ways between Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire uh, in their films. But it makes sense because it happened right after Civil War for the whole storyline. So I guess we didn't really need an origin part. Uh, I'm but overall, kind of glad by that. Like you take up so much story time introducing it when this is the third introduction. We like, got it. We got it. You got his yeah. spider. He's, he's bit. He's Spider-Man. Yeah. I much prefer that they didn't hash out the origin story a third time. I, I actually appreciate that. And the fact that they introduced him in Civil War, now we're familiar. Okay, let's have our first standalone film. And to me, they knocked it out of the park. Like Homecoming is one of my favorite MCU films. I loved it. I can't believe it didn't break a billion. No, yeah, not not the first That's one, shocking. but it, it yeah. did do very well. Mm, but yeah, yeah I'm not sure it would have been a, a big B. Yeah, mm. the big B. The big B. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> When it comes to Funko Pops, there was lots for this film, but two that I could think of off the top of my mind that I do enjoy were the homemade spider suit. Really enjoyed the way that pulled off into pop form. And then especially one that has to be mentioned. It's not a Spider-Man pop, but it is the 2017 SDCC Tony Stark, where he's holding the Iron Man helmet. I don't know if you got any off the top of your minds that I didn't mention. That's a really good one. There were a few Vulture ones that were kind of cool. And I did like, there was a bunch of variants of of the Tom Holland Spider-Man, like the yellow jacket. Yeah, the yellow jacket. That was the, yeah. Uh, yeah. Headphones. Yeah, the uh, headphones and yellow jacket was kind of cool. Yeah, there's yeah. some really great yeah. pops from that set. They actually did a bunch of versions of the suits. Mm. And you're right, homemade suit is one of my favorites. Next film is Thor Ragnarok, November 3rd, 2017, on a budget of $180 million, box office at $854 million, tomato ranking 93%, audience score 87%. Easily the best of all the Thor movies. It had a nice set of comedy in it, great action scenes, and especially a pretty great storyline where you have that kind of plot twist that Thor, and I guess I'll mention Loki also, surprisingly have an older sister and she becomes the antagonist of the film. And I did really enjoy Hulk's involvement in the film also. Yeah, Gladiator Hulk was a great addition. As yeah. well as the Grandmaster. The Grandmaster was... Ugh. Which is a great Funko Pop. Just stole the show. But for yeah. me, it was the humor. Mm -hmm. Like, I know we talked about this before uh, in this podcast, but the fact that they turned it around, like, complete 180 from the horse crap dark world mm -hmm. into this brand new Taika Waititi, who I'd never seen before. Mm -hmm. So, like, I, I became a huge fan from Ragnarok, and then even his movies outside of the MCU, like Jojo Rabbit and other stuff that he's done, I became like a Taika Waititi fan. Mm -hmm. 
And it was the humor, the yeah. music. It was one of the first times that uh, Led Zeppelin music uh, mm-hmm. was was actually allowed to be. They they didn't lend out their license very much, mm-hmm. so it was uh, one of the first times of getting some really good Led Zeppelin music in a film. And mm-hmm. that's what Taika Waititi does better than anyone else is merge music and comedy, mm-hmm. but the appropriate amount. And Chris Hemsworth got to show us how funny he was. Mm-hmm. To me, it's the one of my favorite MCU films, and it's definitely the best Thor film, even way better than what they tried to replicate and did not as good of a job with Thor Love and Thunder. Yeah, but this the humor in this was like smart humor. Yeah. Versus Love and Thunder was campy. I totally humor. agree. Like it was like, it was taking the audience for granted. Like yeah. It was just... It was no, not so anyway. Yeah, no, it was great. Ragnarok is great. The the back and forth between Thor and Bruce Banner was great. Yeah, I love that. I loved, <laughs> that was some of my favorite scenes. You know, uh, we yeah. fought. We fought. Yeah, who won? Who won? Oh, I did quite easily actually. That doesn't sound. That right. doesn't sound right. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely love that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When it comes to Funko Pops, I guess you guys already kind of mentioned the two I had in my mind, which are the Gladiator Hulk, which they made the regular. There's a 10 inch, I believe, and then a black light 10 inch and mm-hmm. then Grandmaster also uh, turned out pretty well. I don't think you could say York no to Comic-Con. Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Grandmaster was a New York Comic Con. Yeah, there's yeah. also SDCC uh, Glow Eyes Thor, which is really good from the outside. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Next film is Black Panther, released February 16th, 2018, on a budget of $200 million, box office at $1.382 billion, tomato ranking 96%, audience score 79%. I think this is an amazing movie. It's in my top five favorite MCU films of all time. Uh, It's one of those movies I went into it thinking I wasn't going to understand it because it's based off of a whole different culture, but I ended up understanding it completely fine. And it's different compared to your MCU movies, and uh, and that's why I think it made it so high because of it being so different but so good at the same time. And I feel it's definitely one of like the most underrated of the MCU films. I actually agree more with the audience score. It was okay. But the fact that it it got a Best Picture nomination and did 1.3 billion, I was just not on the same page. I wouldn't even put it in my top 10. Now, I see why people liked it. Like, don't get me wrong. But I enjoyed Black Panther and Wakanda's role and the Wakanda characters more in Infinity War than I did in Black Panther. Well, Just my hot take. My take... Uh, I still haven't watched Black Panther, so okay. it's on my to-do list. <laughs> <laughs> so, so truth gonna, be told, I'm going to sit this one out. <laughs> I, I will say, I could have made something up. One thing that I really did like is I liked all the drafts of the tigers. Maybe there was one or two. Yeah, Martin Freeman was a huge plus for me. I loved him in Love Actually. He was in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I like that guy. That guy is really funny. I did find it odd that he's playing an American secret agent and pulling off the American accent when he is like very British, super British. But he uh, played a uh, great character, Ross, I believe, uh, Agent Ross. Hmm. Uh, and then he reprises the role in uh, Wakanda Forever. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I and, I and I know we're skipping way ahead, but I much preferred the Black Panther sequel to the original. I know it's blasphemous because of how much money it made and how popular it was. Mm-hmm. But for me, I was not a massive fan of the first Black Panther. All right, there you go. There you go. When it comes to pops, they made a ton of pops for this set. But two that I had in mind was the recently released Funko Hollywood exclusive to Chaka. And then the also recently released now, as I think about it, they made a T'Challa on Throne. That was a Target exclusive. I really liked, there was a Walmart glow, blue eyes, mm-hmm. Black, Black Panther. Panther. Yeah. That from that original set, plus the just regular T'Challa Black Panther with the chase with the mask on. Both of those are great pops from that original set. Next movie is Avengers Infinity War, April 27th, 2018, on a budget of between three twenty-five million and $400 million, box office of $2.048 billion, tomato ranking 85%, audience score 92% fantastic movie i don't think you could rank it any lower or say anything less than fantastic uh the way that they built up thanos getting each of the different stones was done well especially how he had to get the soul stone 
Oh, geez. All right. Yeah. Uh, and I think the best part about this movie and why it's so good is that it's so rare to see the antagonist on top at the end of the movie. I totally agree with that. I rank Infinity War and Endgame as some of my favorite film. Forget MCU. Some of my favorite films that I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And it, the funny thing about how amazing Infinity War was and how well it did in the box office, everyone knew that Endgame would even be bigger, which is crazy when you cross $2 billion in ticket sales. Yeah. That you know, like, oh my gosh, when when Endgame comes out, yeah, and I think it was like an eight month gap or or ten month gap. It wasn't that sure. far yeah. off, and you were just like, yeah, leaving it on a cliffhanger. Mm -hmm. The here the the villains on top, yeah, he wins. Yeah, uh, yeah. it is m leaving you on the edge of your seat. Masterpiece, like, just mm. how are they going to win? Yeah, the yeah. Avengers. I don't know. It's 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 insanely good. It's one of the best movies they ever made. Yeah, by far, and in the MCU for sure. Yeah, there's nothing you can say bad about it. If you think there's something wrong with it, then you don't like puppies. Yeah, <laughs> you don't like rainbows. There's something wrong with you. There's something mentally wrong. There's something with wrong it. with you mentally if you don't like it. That's all there is to it. Yeah. I absolutely think to have that many characters, uh, because now the if you look back to uh, Avengers: Age of Ultron, now they've expanded. Like they're now we have the Guardians, now we have Ant Man, now we have Black Panther, now we have Spider Man. Mm -hmm. There's so many characters in Infinity War, and you don't feel like they jam too much, like that horrible piece of crap Superman versus uh Batman oh, yeah, yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. it was like, well, we have to get these people introduced because they need to have their films. Yeah. And here's Wonder Woman and Cyborg yeah. and Aquaman, yeah, and, and they Fox. rushed the characters, they in. rushed everything in yeah. for no reason, didn't develop the storylines. And yeah, this exactly. is many, yeah. many years in the works, yeah. and they pulled it off beautifully. It's it is, and there's a lot of great Funko for this one as well. But it's also a very complex storyline, and it flowed nicely. If yeah, it flowed really nice, you know, you didn't get lost, no, you know? oh, and you didn't get bored, yeah, you didn't get bored, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And speaking of the Funko Pop, so some that I had listed down, I thought I'd mention, even though not entirely a fan of this kind of Funko Pop, the Chrome Thanos. I mean, at the time, it made sense because of the six different colors of the Infinity Stones, and I didn't really like how they repeated it for Hulk for the Endgame set. And then the Light Up Iron Man, something brand new Funko has never done. That was pretty sweet. And okay. then I had to mention about the Hulk Buster, the Hulk busting out of Hulk Buster, because the mm. funny story behind it is that I believe... That specific scene ended up becoming a deleted scene. So when people bought the pops for it and then they're watching the movie, they realize, where is this scene? And yeah, that yeah. kind of leaves the gap of how you see regular Bruce Banner and then all of a sudden watching Endgame, he's in his like Hulk form. It's like, how did that happen? And that mm -hmm. scene that he's supposed to bust out and fight Thanos wasn't included yeah. in the movie. But you probably could watch it on Disney Plus realistically. That pop's amazing though. Yeah, it's that pop is it was a GameStop exclusive. Yeah, that was pop amazing. But yeah. Next movie is Ant-Man and the Wasp, July 6, 2018, on a budget of $130 to $195 million, box office of $622.7 million, tomato ranking 87%, audience score 80%. I surprisingly liked it better than the first Ant-Man, but not much. Like if you're ranking these yeah. films, it'd be like Ant-Man, then Ant-Man and the Wasp. There's no like, there could be a film possibly in between, but it's just neck and neck. And there was some funny moments, like you got the ants playing the drums. And then basically with Funko Pops, we kind of discussed about that already with the original Ant-Man and how there was like a chase for Ant-Man and Wasp. I love the comedy in here. Like I love Paul Rudd. And you mm -hmm. literally can't go wrong with Evangeline Lilly. So I was into the sequel. I, I don't know if I necessarily cared for the ghost mm. character. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Much that, that didn't really sit with me. But I'll tell yeah. you, like, I really enjoyed a lot of the other villains involved. Mm. Like, Michael Douglas is always extremely dry and sarcastic with Paul Rudd. Yeah, the two, of them, like. two of them together are really funny. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, 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 it's good. Like, I totally agree. I'd put Ant-Man and Ant-Man and Wasp uh, sequel right on the same bar. Like, they're the same type of movie for me. Yeah, I put them pretty equal. The only reason I would put Ant the original Ant-Man number one is just the introduction of Paul Rudd as Ant-Man. It's kind of like, I like the way they did it. I thought it was really cool. Because I didn't buy it at first. I was like, Paul Rudd's playing Ant-Man? This is going to be dumb. Yeah. And it was like, yeah, okay, I bought you it. did it. I was yeah. like, yeah, that's good. Yeah. You buy that he's reforming his life, mm -hmm. a thief. Mm -hmm. He got a little jacked. Not like, like not looking like The Rock, but yeah. he wasn't like a schlub like he was in so, a lot of the comedy films. Yeah. yeah so he got a little jacked up. And yeah, it was yeah. funny. Yeah. 
anything Paul Rudd does, I will I will watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Next film is Captain Marvel, March eighth, two thousand nineteen, on a budget of one hundred and fifty two to one hundred and seventy five million dollars. Box office at one point one two eight billion dollars. Tomato ranking seventy nine percent. Audience score forty five percent. That's telling, yeah. man. That's about right. I hated this movie. Yeah, I was bored. I didn't it finish was, it. It was awful. I'll give yeah. you one thing about this movie. Yeah, is it was one of the last Stanley cameos before he died, and he was on the bus and he was holding the clerk script. Okay. Or sorry, mall rats. Sorry. Yeah, okay. And it was a huge shout out, and it made Kevin Smith like cry. Like, yeah, it was so cool because of where the movie actually takes place, mm-hmm. and he's on the bus reading the mall rat script. Mm-hmm. And to me, it was about that kind of nostalgia that I loved, mm-hmm. and the shout out to like Blockbuster Video. Mm-hmm. But the actual like, I I guess I'm not a massive fan of the actress. I didn't like the storyline. I I honestly just mm-hmm. did not like Captain Marvel. No. The only highlight for me was I didn't want I didn't see it in theaters. I was watching it at home. That was the I ordered in pizza, and that's the first time I ever got Asiago cheese on my pizza. <laughs> that's and it's, like. it's really good. And that's the highlight. I highly recommend that. That's the <laughs> highlight of watching Captain Marvel. I didn't even I honestly didn't even finish it. I was just like, this pizza is so good. This movie's crap. Uh, <laughs> you know, like, it was pretty, I was, I was pretty bored. Bad. I was so bored. It was pretty, I was so pretty bored. Bad. Yeah. Yeah. The deep fake to make a young Sam L. Jackson. Mm. I like that. Yeah, that was cool. I wasn't a huge fan of the the curls, uh, any of the storyline, the thing with Jude Law. Uh, no. I wasn't a fan. You nailed it. It was it was a boring movie. It was movie. boring. Yeah. 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 So all right. yeah, in my notes, I wrote it was definitely rough to watch. Once again, like I mentioned with Thor: The Dark World, I saw myself playing games on my phone more often than watching the movie. <laughs> yeah. Did we really need this for the storyline? I don't think so. Because yes, they set it up because of the end credit for Infinity War, where yeah. uh, Nick Fury turns into dust and has the little like uh, beacon device or whatever it's called uh, it with the Captain Marvel. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And like we could have literally skipped that because that's how Endgame. I'm pretty sure kicked off was like all of them staring at that little yeah. device waiting for Captain Marvel. So we didn't really need that. And then, yeah, now that also in 2023, I believe there is the Marvel's movie. And I wasn't entirely a fan of Ms. Marvel and Disney Plus. I liked it better than the Captain Marvel movie, Mm -hmm. but I just, I'm not excited for the movie. I'm definitely waiting until this comes on Disney Plus to watch it because I will not watch it in the theaters. And I'm not going to really go into the Funko Pops because all I wrote is that there were too many Captain Marvels and that there was the cat, Goose the Flurkin, or yeah, it's a Flurkin, not a cat, I guess. There was uh, a Chase version for that. That was cool, but yeah. I agree. Yeah, and then when yeah, she that was... came back with Endgame and she had Ivan Drago's wife's haircut. Like, <laughs> we didn't need that. Like, we don't, we don't A need A Bridget that. Nielsen reference. We, All we, right. we didn't need that. Like, <laughs> come on, what are we doing here? You know? Funny. Good thing we're going to another great movie now. Avengers Endgame, April 26, 2019, on a budget of 356 to $400 million. Box office at $2.798 billion. Tomato ranking 94%. Audience score 90%. Fantastic movie. It's side by side with Infinity War. I'm kind of, for some reason, I'm on that side of the fence of saying like Infinity War is a little bit better, mostly because when rewatching it, I had to get in the mindset of like, if I was watching it for the first time and like not expecting really that the bad guy was going to end up on top when you knew in Ed game that something good was going to happen. But yeah, both of them are side by side. And I mean, the first half was a bit slow, but the second half, obviously, there was so much going on, probably just as much as the entire film of Infinity War, uh, therefore still making it one of the best MCU movies. It's mm. in my top three. Like, I loved Endgame so much. I saw it three times in the theater. I've introduced my son to Marvel, so I rewatched it with him at home. I could watch that movie all day, every day. Mm-hmm. Like, there is so much going on between Hawkeye and Black Widow, Steve Rogers' story, uh, Tony Stark, having a family, mm-hmm. uh, helping them solve the problem. I will say one bugaboo is he came up with the theory of time travel instantly. I think that needed probably would have taken him a little bit more time. That was pretty quick in the old It's pretty the, quick. He's, cabin, like, he's just he's like, like, you know, if I did this, 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 try time travel. They're going to Gatorade. 
And he's just like, boom, time travel. Boom. I just it's solved possible. it. possible. I, I solved just, it. I just solved it. There you go. Boom. So that to me was a little quick, mm-hmm. but everything leading up to the full circle of Tony Stark's redemption as a human being mm-hmm. and him sa- being so selfish to then sacrificing himself. Mm-hmm. And the way that all ended was to me the most beautiful. Like I cried a grown man, middle-aged man, and I'm weeping. And then I shed more tears with the Steve Rogers storyline at the end. Like I mm-hmm. was a, a baby every time I watched it. Now you got me thinking of whether or not I, I like Infinity War more than Endgame. It's I've been, tough. I've been thinking about that the whole time now that you mentioned that. I'm it's like, like oh, Infinity know. War is darker. Oh. It's like why I love Empire so much. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. it's darker. It is darker. Yeah. But there's so, like that, the the end battle scene in Endgame. Yeah. When Steve Rogers is wielding Thor's hammer. And they, I knew it. And everyone getting behind it and the music. The battle it's scene was so good. The battle scene was a little too long. All right, it was a little long. It was a little long. That battle scene good. went on for you could, you could have cut five minutes out of that. Thing. <laughs> it was it was good. <laughs> we get it. We get it. If only Captain Marvel died in it. <laughs> oh, that's not nice. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Okay. So when it comes to Funko Pops, died there's easily there. three pops in mind for me. That being, of course, the glow in the dark I am Iron Man previous exclusive has to be discussed. Captain America with the shield and the Molnir has to be discussed. And then one other one is the Iron Spider with the gauntlet. That was a pretty popular one also. And I thought I would end off talking about a lot of people I remember were trying to think of theories of how Thanos would die. Did you by any means think that it was possible, if you guys remember, that the Ant-Man theory was a possibility of Thanos dying? I'm not familiar with that theory. Know, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. So basically, there was a huge fan theory, and a lot of people were on board and were thinking, this is the only way Thanos is dying, where Ant-Man would have to shrink into tiny self, crawl up Thanos' butthole, and expand in the inside, and that's how Thanos dies. And a lot of people were on board, oh, and it went boy. blew up all over social media and were like, this is the only way Thanos can die. Marvel, especially in a <laughs> Disney-owned world, that would never happen. Ever extended cut, <laughs> yeah. The dark <laughs> R rated cut, and Paul Rudd's just like, All right, let's NC, go. NC 17, boom, you know, he's there making yeah. a stew in, in his hut, yeah. <laughs> you know, oh, what was that? Something bit me. Oh, no, oh, no, oh. well, that's weird. No, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, all the viewers listening to this, comment in the comment section below if you <laughs> thought the Ant Man theory was possible or what that. you thought. That's yeah, a, that's, a, that's an interesting theory. Yeah. All right, all right, all right, I'm in. Next film, Spider-Man Far From Home, released July 2nd, 2019 on a budget of $160 million, box office at $1.132 billion, tomato ranking 90%, audience score 95%. It wasn't too bad of a movie, but there was something like off about it while watching the film. And I felt, I think the best way I can uh, say this, and especially you guys are sports fans, so you might like this random analogy, I felt that Spider-Man Far From Home was basically the post-media conference for Avengers Endgame. I felt it was just, it wasn't a full-on Spider-Man film, but more of a little extra to Avengers Endgame, especially because the whole storyline revolved around the whole glasses that Tony Stark gave uh, Spider-Man. But one thing I will give this movie, I found that Mysterio, in my opinion, was a better villain than Vulture in Homecoming. Hmm. I really like hmm. Jake Gyllenhaal as Mysterio, and I did not see the plot twist going where what his plan was. Oh, faking everything? Yeah, yeah. I, I honestly didn't see that coming. So I hmm. was actually, as a lover of film in general, I can usually spot a plot coming a mile away, mm-hmm. or even dialogue. Like, I'll be like, oh, that person's going to say blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So I was really impressed because that twist I did not see coming. Mm -hmm. And I do like the fact that Mysterio's last act is exposing Peter Parker's true identity. Yeah, I agree with that. Actually, I feel like, I feel like the Michael Keaton as Vulture, I felt that it was kind of lazy, you know? Mm -hmm. Like they really didn't develop the whole story of Vulture, really. You know what I mean? I thought, you know? Mm -hmm. I thought it was just kind of like, hey, here's Vulture, boom. I think they might have had Vulture in that film, I'm thinking, because I remember reading up that when Sam Raimi was supposed to do Spider-Man 4, I think the main villain was supposed to be Vulture. 
So they might have wanted to add Vulture into this film as kind of like, okay, we're gonna see if we can do what Sam Raimi was supposed to do. Yeah. I just the, think the from, villain, I like I like I like Jake John Yeah, Jake. he did he yeah. did a really yeah. good job. Yeah. And, and it was neat to see, you know, it's more of a the overseas thing. Having JB Smoove and Martin Starr, mm-hmm. the teachers that are taking them on there. That's uh, awesome. Yeah. Those yeah. two comedians or uh, actors are really funny. JB Smooth is so funny. So it was and that was that was a fun part of that. Yeah. But Tom Holland is a great Spider-Man mm-hmm. and it's good. But for me, even though how good Far From Home is, I would go No Way Home, Homecoming, and then Far From Home. That's just me, I think, because No Way Home is such a mm. such a cool idea. And then Homecoming for me was such a good, great movie. I also like the the switch of making Flash, the bully, more cerebral bully, not physical. I thought that was a, a good change from the Tobey Maguire version mm-hmm. of, of Flash, mm-hmm. uh, where he's just a d- mm-hmm. and not a giant physical bully. Gotcha. I mm-hmm. did like that switch. All right, cool. Anyway. Cool. Yeah. When it comes to Pops, I only wrote down Mysterio, mainly because it was actually the first Mysterio we had ever gotten, even before the comic book versions we recently got. And then uh, there's the elements, I guess, also that are pretty cool. But I felt like they made way too many Spider-Mans that, like, I felt like they could have cut so many out from that set. I also don't think we needed that water monster. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. The, the they made... You're right. The yeah. yeah, this is one of the elements. But yeah, they made a glow-in-the-dark one. Blue's not a great color glow-in-the-dark, so they could have yeah. skipped out on that. That was a dumb pop. Yeah. Next film is Black Widow, July 9th, 2021, on a budget of $200 million, box office of $373.8 million, tomato ranking 79%, audience score 91, which I do not agree with that audience score whatsoever. It was an okay movie, don't get me wrong. It was a pretty dark beginning for any MCU film. Uh, But I think, yeah, the problem is, is that this should have been released after Civil War because that's exactly where the storyline takes place uh, is because it involved the Sokovia Accord Uh, instead of taking place after Endgame where we already seen Black Widow pass away. I think the reason they did it is to set up Hawkeye because of the end credits scene and it has Yelena going after uh, Clint Barton. However, it makes me think, though, if they were to film it, let's say it was 2015 to be released in 2016 after Civil War. Would we have had David Harbour as Red Guardian and Florence Pugh as Yelena because David Harbour at that time would have been filming Stranger Things season one. So his schedule would have been full. And Florence Pugh, Mm -hmm. although she was acting at that time, she didn't get her breakout moment until playing former WWE superstar Paige in the Fighting With My Family movie in 2019. So would they have discovered Florence Pugh before that? I don't think so. So it would have been a complete different actress. And yeah, I think if the reason that this movie did okay, honestly, is because I felt Yelena was like the star of the movie. Like, don't get me wrong. She I like did. Scarlett Johansson. Lots of things I can say about Scarlett Johansson, to be honest. But I feel like if I were to go down that road, uh, you guys would probably be thinking, am I on a podcast with DK Wrestler or Mushy Man? <laughs> oh. <Hey-o. laughs> hey, nobody is ever going to say a not nice word about Scarlett Johansson. No, there's nothing. No. <laughs> Shout out to Mushy Man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I would say that what really affected this film was COVID. So this was supposed to be released and then it was shelved and then it was straight to Disney Plus. There was a lot going on to the fact where Scarlett Johansson sued. Yeah, she sued them. Yeah, uh, Marvel yeah. Studios yeah. Yeah. because she didn't get the release that she deserved. And they, actually the Funko Pops came out before and then the movie got shelved forever because of COVID. And then they just gave it a half ass release. I didn't mind the movie. It was okay. And you're right. Yelena is really the star. Mm -hmm. And I think they did that to set up the Hawkeye series, but that's my own theory. Mm -hmm. I didn't mind a Black Widow prequel because when we do meet Black Widow for the first time in Iron Man 2, she's just a spy. Like Mm -hmm. she's, how does she, we, we get stories, but we don't get an actual glimpse into her past. And now we do. It was okay. And David Arbor was awesome. Yeah. yeah David Arbor was good. It was okay. It was just, it was an yeah. okay movie. It's all, you know. And yeah. here's a little tidbit for your audience that there's a super theory out there that Red Guardian actually is David Arbor's character from Stranger Things. Uh, I think I heard about that. It's a crazy theory. Yeah, you if you, about if that, you Google it, actually, yeah. and it makes yeah. sense, the timing, yeah. all of it, 
And then when it comes to Funko Pops, the only two I put down was Red Guardian. And then I had to mention Yelena because I remember when that pop came out, never did I expect that Yelena was a young person because the pop looks like an old lady. Not going to lie with the way they did the hair. And then they redid it for Hawkeye. And I'm like, okay, yeah, now that looks more like Yelena. Yeah. Yeah. Next movie is Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, released September 3rd, 2021 on a budget of $150 to $200 million, box office at $432.2 million, tomato ranking 91%, audience score 98%. It's some of the best action scenes I've seen in the MCU movie. I love the fighting scenes, especially when it's on the bus or they're doing the May scene. Uh, and especially ending off adding Wong to this whole thing and possibly him yeah. being the sequel is awesome. I can't wait for the sequel. It was okay. Like, I didn't mind it. For me, it's about how cool it is to have a Canadian actor of Asian descent who was on a CBC sitcom mm -hmm. become a Marvel hero. Like, to me, that is so cool. Mm -hmm. Simu Liu. I could always do without Aquafina, to be honest. I'm not a huge fan. No, no. <laughs> I mean, she's she's all right, but she can be a little grady at, at some times. She bugs you? A little, sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. All, right, all right. But the, I'll agree with you. The action sequences, mm. especially on the bus at the beginning, were really good. It was visually a great movie. I wouldn't put it anywhere in my top 10 of MCU films, but I didn't hate it either. There you go. Yeah. When it comes yeah. to Funko Pops, I didn't really like the set, to be honest. There I felt a lot of the pops really... are the same. Great Protector was the only one I really liked, which is the big dragon. There was the, the one Shang-Chi where he is jumping. There were two different versions, and there's one where he's got the rings, and it, it's okay. It's probably the nicest looking pop. But... Mm, there was too many pops. Yeah, there was a lot. Yeah, that's what, sort of, like, especially with Shang-Chi himself, there were too many. Like, cut out, like, five of, like, the seven that you had and have only two, yeah. and I would have been fine need, with that. We didn't need Razor Fist. Yeah, uh, we didn't need any of that. Too many. It was too many. All right, so the next film is Eternals, released November 5th, 2021, which November 5th, that's MD Shady's birthday. Shout out to MD. Hey, budget, hey. On a budget of $200 million, box office of $402.1 million, tomato ranking 47%, audience <laughs> score 77%. And I agree with that tomato ranking because this easily, in my opinion, is the worst MCU film out of all 30 that are currently out right now. There's mm. something about it where, yes, there is some cool scenes, but just I'm lost. I have no idea what's going on. They're throwing big words like celestial and deviance at me. It's like, I want to enjoy a Marvel movie, not be in English or history class again. Like, come on. Marvel. It was unbearable. Mm. <laughs> it was really unnecessary. It was yeah. completely unnecessary. Like it gets confusing someone even watching recap videos and normally like in recap videos, I can understand after that still don't know what's going on. I think yeah. this was a movie meant for the absolute hardcore comic book fans and not for like a casual MCU watcher. Like this was not good. So if I were to rank the, the top three worst, it would be Thor the Dark World, Captain Marvel, then Eternals is number one, in my opinion. Oh, 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 oh. That's, that's a good list. That's though. a good list. That's yeah, pretty yeah. much our list as well. Yeah, I will yeah. give you one highlight from Eternals. There is only one. Mm -hmm. And that's Kamel Nanjiani. Okay. I right. think I'm pronouncing that right. Yeah. Nanjiani, yeah. yeah. Uh, from Silicon Valley. Yeah. He got jacked up. Do you remember the? Oh, he the was he got super jacked because yeah, he yeah. was he was absolutely like nothing but nerd roles. Yeah, Silicon Valley comedies. Stuber. Yeah, is extremely funny gentleman. Great actor. Great stand up comic. If you've never seen his movie, The Big Sick, oh, yeah. you're missing out. Like he is a very talented man. Mm. He's currently in the Disney Plus aired chippendale series mm -hmm. uh biopic but a very talented guy and he got absolutely ripped up oh yeah to he, do yeah. eternals and the photos that came out and, yeah. everything, and yeah. he was just like soaking it in yeah everybody was like what really? looks like hugh jackman from the first yeah. wolverine exactly yeah yeah and he had some funny funny moments introducing his character in eternals but eternals as a whole it belongs exactly there, right in a deep, dark hole where we never discussed that it was actually released. Angelina Jolie mm -hmm. in the MCU? Mm -hmm. Nope. Same uh, with Salma Hayek. Salma Hayek, yeah. 
Oh, I just didn't like it. I'm not going to bother mentioning about the Funko Pops because if anyone so wants many. to go, if you want to go see the Funko Pops, go to Dollarama because they are there for $5. Every single one of them. Yeah, even the Icarus Funko Shop exclusive. Yeah. All of them. Just... Funko Shop exclusive at Dollarama, $5. So if you bought it for 15 US when it came out, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh well. Honestly. Yeah. Uh, horrible. Horrible movie. Horrible. Horrible. <laughs> At least the next movie we're about to talk about is fantastic. Spider-Man No Way Home, December 17th, 2021, on a budget of $200 million, box office at $1.916 billion, tomato oh, ranking 93%, audience score 98%. Amazing. Ooh. It's in, it's easily okay. like, it could be number two or maybe number one on my list, but I think maybe number two putting avengers at number one so much nostalgia bringing in toby Maguire and andrew garfield so many yeah. villains in the movie but they did a much better job of utilizing more villains in a movie than sam raimi did for the third movie and i honestly don't know if you can top this movie uh with the possible spider-man 4 it's it's, it's fantastic it was the culmination like it was uh you're bringing in all the key villains from all the other adaptations the toby mcguire's andrew garfield's all the tom holland spider-man films mm -hmm. doctor strange the fact that you had all three spider-man actors on screen at the same time and did it in such a beautiful funny way there was a lot of jokes mm -hmm. uh i absolutely like I loved it. You're right. Nostalgia is the greatest way to describe that. I absolutely thought it was fantastic. I, I love No Way Home. Now that we're actually talking about it, I want to watch it again. It's worth yeah. it. I've watched it three times. I think I'm going to watch it twice, but yeah. yeah. I, I, there's nothing I can say. It's a great movie. It's great so movie. good. Start to finish. Yeah. yeah. I, I do feel like maybe it was a bit of a weak introduction, like him interrupting Doctor Strange's spell mm. to make him forget. Oh. Everyone, everyone forget who he was. And then he just keeps talking and that's what actually brings everyone in. Hmm. Maybe that's a smidge weak as far as a, okay, well, how do we do this? And they said, well, if we did this, but it just yeah. seems a little too easy hmm. for that to be the reason all these villains and other Spider-Mans are in their universe. Hmm. I thought it was a bit of a weak plot point, but the actual film itself and the actors reprising their roles, even Jamie Foxx as Electro mm -hmm. was great. They didn't actually get Thomas Hayden Church. I heard they just used voice. They didn't actually mm -hmm. get him for the role, but it was amazing to see uh, Willem Dafoe. Mm -hmm. And Alfred Molina. I actually, one of my favorite movies, I love Spider-Man 2 from the Tobey Maguire series. Mm -hmm. yeah. And a lot of that has to do with Alfred Molina's version of Doc Ock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When it comes to Funko Pops, there's so many, and especially more coming out in 2023. Green Goblin stands out, the Box Lunch exclusive, Spider-Man 3-pack to recreate that moment, even the 8-pack where you have like that scene, and then the build -a scene I guess I'll mention that two of them are going to be Target Con exclusives. Who knows what the other ones are going to be, whether they're regular or maybe they'll do them convention exclusives for the rest of the set, which would be insane. I think getting the all three Spider-Man actors in the Amazon exclusive is prob probably the highlight for me in the set yeah. yeah it's cool set yeah yeah next movie is dr strange in the multiverse of madness released may 6 2022 on a budget of 200 million dollars box office of 955.8 million dollars tomato ranking 74 percent audience score 85 percent i like the idea of this movie like i wasn't entirely bad but i felt there was definitely something off about this and i don't know if it's because it's so horror-esque because of sam raimi being known for doing uh, evil dead and a bunch of other horror related movies but i think yeah i was a little bit let down because i had so much i guess high expectations realizing oh my god sam raimi i watched the spider-man films as a kid this must be this is going to be one of the best movies i've ever seen but it wasn't and i think once again like i mentioned with like black widow with this movie i felt dr strange was not the highlight of this movie i felt it was either america chavez scarlet witch or even wong i felt had an awesome presence in that movie compared to dr stephen strange himself i'll give you that i actually completely agree and i felt like this was more about scarlet witch than it was about dr strange hmm. which don't get me wrong on the same with the scarlet johansson thing i have absolutely nothing but very nice things to say about elizabeth Olsen. <laughs> I mean, hello. Yeah, yeah. But I agree. I think you can tell it's a Sam Raimi movie. And that's not an insult, but 
I don't like the, especially the skeletons. It's so Sam Raimi. I think I actually like the first Doctor Strange better. Yeah, I could agree with that. I'm all about Wonger. We love Wongers. All about Wong. (laughs) Yeah, love Wong. Yeah, all that matters. Just the Wong. Just the Wong, man. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to pops, all I wrote down, Dead Strange. There's even the glow in the dark one, but both of them are awesome. The Dead Strange and Scarlet Witch moments from near the end of the movie. And then the SDCC America Chavez, where you actually have like the little star portal. I think that was well executed, especially making it a four inch pop sold at a four inch price, not a deluxe price. Yeah, I'll give you that. I think the Dead Strange is probably the coolest looking pop. And there was the glow version, which was Hot Topic. It's nice to see Sam Raimi working with Marvel again, but I feel like it was like, okay, well, how do I make this Sam Raimi? And they tried to make it dark and then the a lot with the the macabre, if you will. And uh, he still managed to work in fighting skeletons in there somehow. I didn't find it as good as the first Doctor Strange. And I felt like it was very heavy on Scarlet Witch storyline than it is anything else. Next film. Thor Love and Thunder, July 8th, 2022, on a budget of $250 million, box office of $760.9 million, tomato ranking 64%, audience score 77%. Yeah, this was a letdown. Ow, that's too high. (laughs) This was a letdown. Story was off. And I mean, there was there like the first beginning part was a little bit promising. And I will admit the first time that I heard the goats, I found it to be funny. But when you hear the goats for the 14th time, and I don't even think I'm exaggerating that number. I think that's like fact check right there. 14 times you hear those goats. It just got so annoying. Like at that time, I was hoping for like Kevin James kid and grownups to appear and say, somebody shoot that turkey. Like I was hoping he was going to appear and say that because I was so annoyed by the goats. And then you have Zeus. Like, what are you doing with Zeus? Like, I actually did a movie uh, review on our YouTube channel. And that was our one of our biggest complaints was Russell Crowe and his fake Greek accent and going there, that whole scene, all of them trying to be undercover and then just throwing the lightning bolt through him. But it was Russell Crowe's horrible accent. Are we allowed to swear on your show? I'm going to bleep it out, but I all just right. do that it for comedic purposes. stupid, man. It was <laughs> just annoying, unnecessary. And then the movie as a whole... We talked about before how funny that Ragnarok was, but in a great way. And they tried to kill too many jokes to death. And there wasn't smart humor. It was making Thor look stupid. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's not the funny parts of Ragnarok was him with sharp, witty humor. There was only one line in Thor Love and Thunder that was sharp sarcasm. And that was the dentist joke Mm. with Gore the God Butcher. But then it also didn't make any sense how all the kids got the power. Yeah. It didn't make any sense that the axe was the way to get to the thing that Gore was searching for. Uh, All of it, none of it made sense. And then it wasn't good. It was just not a good movie. I hated this movie so much. It wasn't good. I don't even want to talk about how much I hate this movie. Yeah. It was so, and honestly, Russell Crowe, like, come on, man. Like what? What are you? What are you doing? You know? And yeah, when they went undercover, which by undercover they they wore curtains. They work. Yeah. Yeah. They put a curtain over their head. Yeah. No one's gonna notice Korg. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. No one's gonna notice that guy. Oh, he's wearing a curtain. Oh. Over his head. Can't be Korg. You know? Like, he must be Greek. And the and the jokes were so bad. Yeah. They were dumb. It was just so forced. The only thing I yeah. liked was the use of Guns and Roses as yeah. The I, I was just gonna say. I was gonna say oh. Korg. Because I enjoy Korg, yeah. and then pretty much you played what seems to be the entire Appetite for Destruction album yeah. Yeah, on a I'll loop. Give you, I'll give you that, but Christian Th- that's Dick, it. arguably one of the greatest actors of our generation, and you slap him into this role that made no sense whatsoever. But then, he didn't butcher any gods. He didn't butcher anybody. You, you saw the aftermath, or, yeah. or yeah. Dead, but you didn't actually show Gore the God Butcher butchering shit. Yeah. There was nothing. Yeah. It was yeah. just yeah. stupid. It was so bad. Real bad. I can't even believe how bad yeah. it was. Let's move uh, on. Yeah, yeah. Let's move on. The only pop I'm going to mention is the pop rides they did, which arguably people say it was one of the best pops of 2022 with the goat boat. Yeah. And then the recently released specialty series, Gore. I, I do enjoy that, but the rest yeah. is like, we don't care about the multi-packs that you slap commons into. No. Agreed. 
agree. Totally agree. I hate that. Then the final film of the MCU before, obviously, we get to Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania releasing next week is Black Panther Wakanda Forever, released November 11th, 2022, on a budget of $250 million, box office of $827.2 million, tomato ranking 84%, audience score 94%. It's not as good as the first Black Panther film, in my opinion, but not by much. Like, it's almost kind of what I mentioned about Ant-Man and the Wasp and then Ant-Man, respectively. It's still a great movie, though. It was a perfect tribute at the beginning for Chadwick Boseman. And I think the way that they wrote him off, I guess, made sense. Uh, And then I thought, sure, he did a great job as Black Panther. But I don't know if I want to see a third film for this movie. I mean, it would be cool. I'd rather see that than uh, what seems to be we're probably getting a fifth Thor film because of the end credit scene involving Hercules. But uh, I I don't know how I feel about another movie for Black Panther. I didn't watch the first one. I I didn't watch the second one. (laughs) I sure as hell ain't watching the third one. I didn't mind. I thought Namor was great. I thought Angela Bassett, she's the front runner right now to win the Oscar for Best Supporting Actress. And I buy that because Angela Bassett was really good in Wakanda Forever. And I love the introduction of Ironheart. I liked M'Baku. I like Shuri did a good job. They paid tribute to Chadwick Boseman. I actually like this movie more than the original Black Panther, but it's just not my cup of tea. It's 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 a good MCU film. It was it was important to show what happened because you're not going to have more MCU films and Avengers films and then not explain what happened to Chadwick Boseman and Black Panther. So I get it. You had to do this. They would have had a sequel regardless because of the success of the first film. Mm-hmm. So with Chad Boseman uh, dying, then it makes sense. You have to do this. And I think they did it in a tasteful way. And the end credit scene had me like, I'm like, oh, that's that's beautiful. Uh, I don't know if I want to spoil it because it's still in theaters. Still new. Uh, but the end credit scene were a great part and a great tribute to a great actor that died way too soon. As terms to the Funko Pops, there was a lot of cool Funko Pops. I could probably say that a lot of these Pops are better than the first movie's Pops. A couple to name off Namor on the Orca even sure he is Black Panther and even the Ironheart that got announced. Those are some sweet pops. Yeah, I agree. And I like the Namor and the Namora. They're colorful. They're they're really good. I actually really enjoyed Namor, his introduction, and they built that character. I was actually, that intrigued me in this film. So the pop was really cool to see as well. All right, so before we end off this podcast, like every fandom-related podcast we do, we mention about pops that we want to see next, especially here for the MCU for this podcast. And we'll just mention one because of the time that we have left over. One pop that you guys want to see as terms of the MCU, it doesn't matter what movie it is, whether it's No Way Home, even though it'll probably end up becoming true in 2023, or even a pop they have not made, or a character they have not made in pop form from, let's say, Iron Man in 2008. There's a lot of options, realistically, that we could go with one i'll mention because it comes off the top of my head i was gonna say no way home pop but like i mentioned uh 2023 it probably end up becoming true i'm thinking a battle scene moments of killmonger and t'challa when they're on the waterfall i think that would be a great pop and especially surprisingly they did not make that when they made so many t'challas and they made so many eric killmongers yeah i'm actually uh even though it's gonna take like 1800 years to release the Civil War battle they have releasing now, we just learned through Funko Fair. So when that's completely together and you have the six facing the six from the Civil War airport fight, that will be really cool to see when it's all assembled. Hmm. For me, the things that I want to see are Iron Man related. That's my favorite MCU character. I'm glad that they did the Hall of Armor Mm -hmm. ones. I'd like to see uh, just more suits. Mm -hmm. We never got a like badass Tony Stark pop ride in like the Audis. Mm -hmm. Never saw that. You know, it'd be cool. It'd be a moment. Remember the scene where Tony Stark was sitting on the, at the donut shop. He was sitting on the sign eating donuts before he met Nick Fury. Yeah. (laughs) That that would be a funny moment with him just sitting on the sign in the suit eating a donut yeah i think that would be a funny moment yeah 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 Yeah. Uh, there's so much that they have done and there's so much history of the mcu 
Yeah. Uh, and there's so many pops that have been made. It mm-hmm. is really, really, really tough to try and nail down which ones we'd want to see that they haven't made yet. Mm-hmm. That's really, really tough. Or like a moment with what was, what was his what was Jeff Bridges' character's name? Oh, Obadiah. Obadiah. Yeah, Obadiah. Like a moment of Obadiah and, and Tony in that last end scene. They actually never made Obadiah when he had that other suit. The, the other suit. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, like, that would be almost be cool. like the the Walgreens exclusive Hulk Buster versus Hulk. Yeah, Remember that one. That would almost be a cool moment. You know. Yeah, so, I totally agree. Yeah, because they didn't make a lot of Iron Man pops when they first got released. Not the first so, film. No. Yeah, it was yeah. 2008. Yeah. Right. So yeah. Yeah. Anyways, guys, that is going to be the end of this second part of the MCU podcast. If you enjoyed what you listened to between both parts, don't forget to smash that like button, leave a comment, and definitely hit that subscribe button for more content like this podcast and any other videos we do on this channel in the future. But we hope to see you guys on a brand new edition of a Funko Podcast. One, two, three. I'm out of here. Thanks for having us.